Uh, and over to the rest of the, the crew here for questions. Yeah, I, I think it's quite interesting. I, I, and, I, and I think I can see opportunities of how we would interface into, into your system. Because I like the fact that your apps um, actually interact directly with, uh, with the website, uh, with, with, the, with, the, with the web server via APIs. Um, which then means that, you know, if we've already got the data sitting in our own databases, we can just basically uh, create engines that can then pass that information to you via via that the same API, so that would be less development on either side, on your side. Um, it becomes clearer. It just becomes an issue of mapping what um, what 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 data points are, are required. Uh, the one thing that I sort of um, was uh, was was wondering is you were saying that there's a possibility of not using real world business keys. Um, what you um, and we you lost you is, for a bit there. Uh, I, I was saying um, you 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 were mentioning the possibility of using. Um, of not actually using barcodes, which in our case are, are real world business keys, um, is the assumption that um, the activity, say, of recording of recording what activity has been done on a field, uh, is recorded always in the field, or because I mean sometimes the activity is recorded at the farmer's homestead rather than on the field. How then would you link? that this activity is related to that particular parcel of land or particular crop? Um, in our case, the household also have an ID. An ID. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, extension agent, if it is on the field, it scans uh, the identifier of the entities on the field. But if it is on the household, data it is the household id will be our anchoring point our primary key it but sometimes the, sometimes you've got a one-to-many relationship between the household and say maybe different crops so i mean it's one thing one challenge that we we essentially had also whereby we would um map the field of a particular farmer and they would have three fields and then um what would then happen is uh, when it came to harvest time, um, mm -hmm. if if we didn't match the actual harvest to one particular field and we took the aggregated yield, um, we couldn't then come back and say, yeah, you know, actually it was this field that performed or that didn't perform, which then necessitated the need for having business keys for each and every one of those entities, which would be a field ID. OK, so within one field ID, you do have three crops. And if I understand you, you might get some of the data on the crops from the farmers himself from home, not from the field. Yes. Yes. Oh, in so, the case that is the way you, you, you develop your questionnaire, your, your data form. It shouldn't be only the farmer ID, but uh, Within the question, there has to be a possibility to filter on with, with a repeat loop, right? It will it will go through asking similar questions for different crops. So the kind of crop types will be one of the questions that has to be answered only after you collect all the data for that specific crop. Then only the extension agent can proceed to the other crops. Uh, I mean, order doesn't matter which one is selected first, but those kind of Things we're solving from the from when we we created the at the, at the form level, which then yeah. necessitates the need for a 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 key, right? A real world key for that field, in the sense that um, even though the stuff is being collected, the data is being collected at the household, we still need to be able to enter which field ID, which it was for that was for that field and that was for that field. Yeah, it, it, it makes sense because I was sort of yeah, um, wondering about the possibilities of then dropping the need for field for what's called for such business keys as field IDs. But yeah. um, in this case, you'd still need them, right? Yeah, yeah. 
what what we have is within a field if we have multiple trials we call them you can call them cross but each one of them will have their own id as well and none of them need to be barcode but that that uh, automatically generated it is a an 18 letters long id that is generated so one field id could still be linked into three different crop ids and during the data collection at uh, farmers home that farmer combination farmer crop name combination could be linked to field crop uh, the the field id and the crop id and which is linked again to a household id at the registration level when you set up that field that field is linked to a farmer id that field is also linked to different crop id so that way, I think it is. It is. Uh, it will be straightforward to link them. Completely. So the the farmer would then need to know what their crop ID, even though it's auto generated, is their field ID. They would still need to know it, or at least the the extension officer would need to know it, right? No, crop name should be sufficient because the moment you scan that household ID, that household ID is linked to that specific field ID. In that field ID, you'd have three three different crops with its own ID, but the ID, the maize field has its own ID. He doesn't need to know the ID of the maize field, but the farmer should only say this data is for maize. So combination but of the, household the, 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 In this case, they might have three different soy crops at the same time on three different ah, okay. fields. It's one field at different times. And three crops. Yeah. Ah, so the yeah, copy name itself becomes insufficient in that case. Yeah, I mean, farmers, you will, you will not expect them to remember IDs. What they can do is when those different soy fields need to have a distinct name, when at the registration level, soy one, soy two, soy three, I don't know, the red soy, the yellow soy, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the name should be is more related to the farm. So in that case, then we, 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 the better thing is not to actually auto generate the ID. We could still generate an ID, but for the farmer, yeah. they need an ID that they know. Yeah, that was what yeah. I was just uh, trying to try yeah. to later on. Yeah. yeah. OK. Hello? Hello? Yes. Um, <laughs> can I jump in for a question? A quick question related to that um, is I was wondering uh, the application itself, is it being run by an extension officer in the field or is it being run by a lead farmer as we kind of have seen with uh, Solidaridade or is it being run by every uh, farmer who is interested in being part of that? Uh, can you just explain that component as well as, okay, as, as applied in Nigeria or in uh, Tanzania, as you said? Yeah, majorly it is for the extension agents. The The app is run by them because the extension agents are mostly, they are not government extension agents, but partners have their own extension agents. And these extension agents could be lead farmers as well, or or anyone who is capable of running this stuff. The partners train them and they are the one that will run it. So let us say it is filled um what is our uh, lead farmers plus extension agents those are the ones that are running it for um most farmers it is more easier for them the, that's why we also diversified the paper based that that they have something on their wall is easier for them or the ivr and the chatbot is much easier for them i see thank you mm -hmm. patricia your hand is also up can I can I interrupt here just for a second? Um, unfortunately, I cannot stay because I'm already 15 minutes late almost for a meeting. I pushed it back, but I can't stay on. Um, I'm very sorry about that. But what would be nice is if you could come out of this at least with some pre pre preliminary um, next steps. You know, what is it that needs to happen? Uh, if you're interested in using it, uh, using the Akelimo framework or testing it, what are the next steps? Uh, you know, wh where do we go from here? Some some very concrete one, two, three action points that we can take forward with you um, with 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 the use case team. So I I'll leave it at that. Uh, and really sorry that I can't stay on to 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 take that forward. Um, but may I leave it with you, Meklet, Eduardo, Siabusa, to sort of 
identify what those concrete next steps are working with the use case team? Yes, sure. <laughs> yeah. We Sorry. Have money. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I, I have to go because I can't I can't put it off anymore. Um, thank you very much, guys. I, I'm going to drop off, but this has been great. So please, please do continue and and um, I will catch up. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Meda. I think we 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 we've gotten started on this, and uh, thank you so much for making it happen. So absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. Um, okay, Thanks. I'll I'll drop off. Please continue. Thanks. Okay, Meda. Hear you later. Thank you. I think Patricia had a. I am. I did on a more on a technical uh, part, but uh, I think we are running out of time. And uh, as uh, Meta said, we need to work out what are the, the next steps, definitely. My questions were, uh, for example, when setting up uh, in terms of, because I see you just looking at NPK, uh, where, where these did this come from the farmers to say we want something to do with NPK only? And uh, the other thing is, are there no other risks to be taken into consideration when uh, you're doing the calculations in terms of uh, pests and uh, diseases? And uh, also to know when you are doing these uh, recommendations, are you using historic um, climate data or you are using, as far as when, uh, are you using maybe last year's uh, data or 30 year climate data? What are you using in terms of uh, weather data to make uh, the recommendations? And um, yeah, when, when these recommendations are made, uh, do you also take into consideration, for example, what the farmer would have done in the previous year? Uh, like maybe if they have been practicing, say, conservation agriculture or something like that, they are so they've changed. Or is this yeah, linked to some management of the farmer previously? Thank you. <laughs> okay, that's quite a number of questions. Let me try them. Um, <laughs> the what aspect of the agronomy or what component of the advisory that we need to focus on is defined by the user by by the partners. So at the project creation step, there were about twenty partners from the two countries that were put together. All of them come from the different steps of stages of parts of the cassava value chain. So they do work with the farmers directly and they do have different concerns and aspects. So that is how we do have uh, input providers, uh, fertilizer companies, NGOs, governmental institutions, universities, research institutions, all sorts of them. So uh, when they define, they define uh, on cassava, it is not common to apply fertilizer at all. It is zero, zero input. And they uh, they know from few trials that are conducted that there is a huge yield again to be made from just applying NPK. So that is why we focused only on NPK and not with additional micronutrients. But given that in our NOT trials, we we defined the first two or three seasons. We we had a treatment actually where additional micronutrients are also added, and we didn't see in any one of them additional additional yield increase by the addition of micronutrients. Majorly, it is N followed by P. K even K wasn't that much limited. So that is the first answer. Why only NPK? The question. And the other, like planting practices, uh, on weeding, on uh, land preparation, plowing, and ridging, and all those things, they are in, in in the other use cases. But they yes, they are addressed. We do have advice for those aspects as well. Uh, I don't know if that answers it, but 
uh, that is how it was in Akilimo. For the weather data, we are looking into historical data. We are looking into the last from 1985 until uh, 2020 at this point, uh, when we start working until 2018, uh, 2017, we were looking at. And then what we do is what is actually in this specific area, what is like based on the rainfall distribution the last the last from 1985 until now, what is an average year looks like? And then we take the two quartiles. We don't want to take the most extremes because those are anyway rare cases. So like a 75% uh, probability and a 25 and then what is the median year? So these are the three years selected based on rain, for historical rainfall distribution. That's what we are taking. We are not looking into a real time weather because for one, the data provision is winkle wankle at this point. There is no really someone on the market that convinces us with a good accuracy that they can provide um, that kind of information. So we didn't look uh, that part. And uh, what was the other question, Patricia? <laughs> Mm, I think, uh, yeah, given that she's also concerned about time, I was thinking let's try to um, figure out the way forward as of now, okay. uh, as we move from uh, from today forward. Uh, probably we will need to engage with you again, but uh, I think from my own point of view, uh, looking at the fact that our advisory needed to look at varieties, site-specific fertilizer recommendations, planting dates, and probably uh, components on uh, crop management. Our challenge as a use case team is to decide on whether or not to adopt uh, Akilimo as a first step. And then once we have decided that we go uh, Akilimo, um, what we would need uh, to, to get it uh, working for us and uh, probably work with it in phases, I think. Maybe it will, we might find that the uh, fertilizer recommendations part is the easiest, which we can tackle easily without too much uh, uh, involvement in getting more data, and then refine it as we go with more data, which we may generate from the field. But I, 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 I leave it to the group to try, and, uh, or to try and help us figure out which way we go as we move forward from here. How do we proceed? I think that's what we need to kind of have uh, out of this meeting as a roadmap. That's a very good idea, Isaiah. Thank you. So, Elisa, yes, you're here. It would be great to hear from uh, Shungo because they are already working with something like this. Is it some? I personally think uh, we can start with what uh, uh, the framework developed for Akilimo. I feel, yes, it's possible because it will just be a changing of crop and then, uh, yeah, and other things. But I think as a starting point, I would think it is uh, good that we start from uh, Akilimo already and then see how best we can then uh, input uh, data for the crop that we are interested in. Mm -hmm. So we start with the climo. Um, uh, Shungu, do you have something to uh, suggest to us on this? Um, yes, I mean we would prefer to stay with um, with our own existing field protocols and and tools and interface into into Aklimo. And there's a reason for that. We actually don't want to, to develop uh, the, the, the what's it called the recommendation engine, which is part of the reason why we, we, we contracted with you. I think 80% of the use case that we're looking for, um, the engine already caters for. So it's something that we can come out and do. I mean, that would mean that Patricia, you would need to develop the crop model side of things and that's already part of it. We would develop APIs that would then pass the other information, like the field information that the extension officers are collecting because we're already collecting with our own tools. And then we would then need to create 
another interface whereby through something like what you can send a, a request for recommendation based on the information that already has come from the APIs previously and the little information coming from additional API to be able to get a recommendation. So I certainly see a fit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe uh, without having to make a solid decision on that, I think the inclination is that we move probably towards uh, Aquilimo, and then we try to see how best we could get it to interface with what uh, uh, Shungu um, and uh, the solidarity that the team are already using, so that it minimizes the amount of uh, changes that would need to take place. So maybe as a first step there, we, would be, we could say we, uh, as a use case team, we're gonna digest what uh, has been presented this morning, and we're going to sit amongst ourselves and probably also uh, try and consider the pros and cons of that. I think that is our first step there. Um, and then uh, we think also that... Uh, and, uh, yes? Yes, if another first first uh, step, maybe one A would be, I think uh, the Akilimo team, they also need to understand how uh, Wadi and other uh, uh, platforms that Solidarity are already using uh, look like and how they are functioning so that they can also be thinking on a possibility of an interface, if it's possible or not possible. Because we may see it, but then, yeah, and then it's something which is, I don't know, it can be possible or impossible. But I felt it would be important for them to understand what Solidarity has already. Yes, I think uh, you're very right, Patricia. Even us, we also don't fully understand what uh, Solidarity has, uh, apart from what we saw when we went in the field. So I think it would be useful maybe to have also a presentation from Shungu or somebody on the Solidarity side sharing with this team here, uh, uh, the Transform team, that they also get to understand, including us. I think you, you've got a very important point there, Patricia. I don't know, can we agree on that one? Shungu. 100%, let's do that. Thank you. So the second point, uh, second point is that, or uh, according to Patricia One A, uh, that we we also have a, a presentation from Shungu uh, or the Solidaridad team at some point, which uh, helps us understand further. Then the third step after that would be, I think, me. I was thinking the the team, the transform team here, could also help us. Uh, given that they had what we want to achieve, what we want to do, and what they already know is happening, they can also uh, digest a bit and uh, help us uh, uh, figure out how it could work out for us if we adopted Akilimo uh, as uh, suggested earlier. So that we, we, it's not only just us trying to figure out which way we go, but they also kind of guide us to say, guys, you look, if you go this way, you have this challenge. If you go that way, you have this challenge. If you go this way, this is the easiest route or the, the most convenient route to, to use to, 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 to go to, to our destination. I don't know whether that would make any sense. No, it, it absolutely does, yeah. It will be very good suggestion that we, if Shungo gives us the presentation and then we can we can also see where we come together or or yeah no okay. i like that idea okay um the last part i had in my mind was that we are very uh, enthusiastic and keen on a, uh, trying to get some few things running in the field in the next season and so there we also wanted to try and be careful so that what, whatever we do is going to be of value, uh, not only for the um, uh, refining of the tools, but also maybe as a way of validation. So we also thinking of, uh, also think that you guys might suggest need to be implemented immediately in the field 
either to address the gaps that Patricia is uh, and, and the modeling team will be facing, or to try and ensure we are already um, validating some of the recommendations coming out of the tool. So that's another area which we think we also need some uh, intense uh, brain work in terms of deciding which way we go. Over. Um, so if, if you if you share the protocol you have for the field activities you have in the coming season, I think that would be maybe the, the starting point for EIA team to revise it, to, to, to look at it and. We don't have any, uh, we don't have any, we are trying to develop something. We have ideas, but we don't have any protocol that is already uh, 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 on paper yet. So we try to figure out what sort of um, uh, priority activities we would need to undertake in the field uh, in view of addressing the gaps uh, that uh, may be there in, with regards to the modeling or uh, otherwise, as well as secondly, with respect to trying to validate some of what the uh, tools are recommending. So it is that area which where I think we also need to do a lot of thinking so that we don't uh, regret after one year that we missed a whole year, we didn't do nothing, or we find that after a whole year, we have done things, but they are completely uh, useless. So, <laughs> so uh, I think that's it's an issue which I think we we would need to 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 think through as we go uh, very intensely in the next few weeks. Over. Okay. In in that case, then I will pass this request to to Meda if she, if. If it is possible to put together uh, maybe share experience from other use cases, what the first steps were, or um, I don't know. It it, it all depends. Uh, do you have a nutrient response data that is relevant for your area? If that is the case, probably you don't need to do an extensive field trial. Uh, if you have no data, maybe it is wise to conduct a few. Uh, in the way that the location being selected representative. So mm -hmm. probably it needs a more background on the objective of this 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 use case, which I, can I, I, can yeah. I say something milky. So 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 the thing is, I think uh, the initial step for us was to do uh, literature review metadata analysis on uh, what has been done with regards to soybean and maybe have a, a, an opportunity maybe to sit with some stakeholders while it's uh, to just uh, at least have the first uh, like recommendations that we can have. So so we are doing literature review and then, then feed into the tool. The next step would be then Use uh, use uh, those uh, uh, recommendations. What would have uh, recommended, like uh, the recommendations from the two, we put those for trialing, for experimenting during the rainy season. That way, it will help us to refine the recommendation already and also get some um, more data that might be uh, required. So we wanted to use uh, information from uh, secondary data but then refine it using um, field uh, trials. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think what we can do is, uh, Eduardo and Siabusa are better on this uh, spot to speak, uh, look into the Guardian that are the Dataverse system, searching for Soya data maybe, in that way we can support you. Um, yeah, uh, John and uh, Edward, and yeah, I think we are having a meeting this afternoon. Yes, you can go ahead, guys. No, I was just saying that, like, I think uh, we've had contact with uh, with um, John uh, about uh, the need to use uh, Carob. Uh, I think uh, Carob is a bunch of scripts um, that can be used to gather data sets and standards and uh, standardize them 
And then, so I think uh, we've had a conversation with John about the possibility of using uh, such tools so that we can help the use case uh, in in gathering data sets. I think this is uh, one thing that Patricia is, is intended. So we will have a conversation with them. I'm not sure maybe today or next week, I'm not sure about that. But, uh, but also, uh, I just wanted to check with my clear how critical are nutrient response trials uh, in this, because I think this is one bunch of data sets that is that maybe if if they can't get or if we we don't get maybe to be needed, uh, maybe the use case can can have uh, trials on that and then yeah. Uh, if you are going to give site specific recommendation, you need to know how soy responds to nutrient nutrient application. Yeah. It is, yeah, yeah, that's true. Because you can start from from what will be your tuning parameter if you start from blanket recommendation for the whole Zimbabwe and you don't have any response for the same kind of fertilizer application, different areas respond differently. And if you don't have a sense of picking that, uh, I think it will be difficult. <laughs> So certain a certain level of data is 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 required. Mm -hmm. Yes, we we didn't want to not do anything this season, so we wanted to to do the board's developing of the tool, and also uh, putting on experiments uh, to 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 refine it or, yeah, as we go, because we don't have time. If we miss a season, then, because uh, our season is starting soon, so we wanted to, yeah, eat two beds with one stone, but I don't know if it's to be possible. So ideally, you have to go the first, the task will be go aggressively in search of data and then see what kind of data that you have in which areas for which areas that will be representative and 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 by that you could identify if there are major focus areas for you where you don't have any data from probably you will go and do uh, a four or a five treatment kind of uh, trials on a selected location and there are there are certain uh, recommendation domain analysis kind of approach to identify uh, a location where you, you can you can uh, a representative location for a vast majority of your target area. Those are the things uh, as I see. Eduardo was saying something. Edu, were you saying something? Sorry, no. That uh, we are reviewing uh, into Africa that they have. Uh available data quite well structure um, and not specifically for these areas but uh, of the use case but uh, yeah maybe can can serve as a as an initial uh, response mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the use case is operating uh, eduardo the use case is operating in a what we call the chinyanja triangle that is uh, central malawi uh, a bit of Mozambique, uh, which is also part of kind of central Mozambique, as well as eastern Zambia. So um, I think those countries that you mentioned, like uh, yeah, Malawi, Mozambique, yes, are relevant for 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 this. So Eduardo, maybe you. It is also possible to run the recommendation domain analysis to see how much similarity there is between the areas Isaiah defined now and uh, the area where there is data soy for. Yes, totally I agree to see yeah, yeah, see the similarities between the, the available data and what are the gaps, totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I take it we are saying that the, uh, the transform team are going to uh, also help us or, or yeah, reinforce the idea of gathering as much data um, 
oral literature available on soy responses to nutrient management and other related kind of studies previously carried out, which we can also make use of and uh, support uh, the work that Patricia and uh, John are already doing. Uh, Eduardo Sia, can you confirm? <laughs> because I'm not in that area. <laughs> yes, yes, we'll, we we are following up with uh, with John and Patricia. Uh, and yeah. OK, great. That's good. So I think uh, if we leave it at that, uh, maybe, I don't know, um, Shungu needs to, is Shungu has left? I think he has left. So maybe uh, we will try to organize, uh, or maybe we get Meda to help us organize a meeting with uh, the next meeting, which Shungu would present what uh, Solidaridad are doing. Or I can take that up and try to organize uh, that meeting for next week or something. It is better if you do it because you are close to where Shungu is. Okay. Uh, if you can organize that and on that meeting, uh, the data campaign can also report the, the progress. All right. OK, great. I think that's uh, good enough for today, isn't it? Yes, yes it was good. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. OK, yeah. I'm sure uh, Siawusa captured the keynotes of uh, Bruce uh, Meda will need to know what, what was agreed in terms of way forward. You did, Siawusa? Yes, I captured. I'll share them the soon after. I'll share them the paper soon after. OK, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, I think we can uh, met, make it. Uh, are you, sorry, I, I kind of volunteered chairing the discussions now. Uh, I think it's supposed to be yourself, Meklit. You can dismiss. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you are chairing, you are chairing. I gave it to you, 100%. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, we will work together. Uh, okay. So, okay, yeah. thank, you. Yeah. thank you so much for the presentation.